I read the story of the death of Lazarus as a story. And a few years ago, the Holy Spirit said to me, this is God talking to you. And this is God telling you that he is interested in your natural needs. God is concerned about where you are. God is concerned about your health. God is concerned about your job. God is concerned about your life, your well-being. And the heaven can intervene in human affairs. The Holy Spirit said to me, what Jesus is telling you here is different from what he told Mary and Martha. But with the same power, you can pick up life from what happened here. And I began to pray. And one morning, the Lord said to me in verse this, listen to this verse, and I hope what he did to me to do it to you. Verse 22 of John 11. But I know that even now, everybody say that with me. I, I, I didn't hear you say, I know. I know. Say it as if you are not afraid. I know. Oh God, you are still afraid. I know. What did you say? I know. You know what? Pardon? Yeah. Say, even now, even now. Are you? Even now. even now what? Don't be afraid. Say it like a child of God. Huh? Say it again. Oh, 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 I'm thank God he's only talking to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad it was for me and not for you. You think this is for you? Yes. Let's start again. Why don't you go from the first line? Oh, Excuse me. What? You do what? Oh, People who know, they don't talk like that. Oh, Let's start again. Oh, Say it again. Oh, what do you know? Pardon? Oh, wait, what did he say? Even now. My donkey, what did he say? <laughs> Even now. That's my donkey in Atlanta. I don't need transportation, I have one there. I know, say that everybody. I know. That even now. Now what? <laughs> Whatsoever thou will ask of God. How many of you have something to ask from God today? Raise your hand and say, ah. ah. When do you want to ask it? Yeah. Say, now. Yeah. Do you know that? Yes. Do you know that? Yes. Here is a woman that lost the only brother. No father, no mother, no husband, nothing. And Jesus came to their town. Not their house, their town, their city, their own Atlanta. And she stood before Jesus and said, but I know, I know, if nobody in the city know me, I know that even now, say now everybody, now. say now. now, say now. now, if God is not in the now, he's not in the past. Hear me carefully. If God is not in the now, he was never God. And if God is not in the now, he can never be tomorrow. 
matter in her time of tears, grief, pain. She said, my spirit is not blind from knowing that even now, even now, whatsoever, do you have any need in your life? Do you have any need in your life? Yes. Do you believe that God can handle it? Yes. Do you think that God is still there? Yes. Are you aware he's there? Yes. Do you know he's there? Yes. He asked me to tell you. He sent me to tell you. Now, now, say now everybody. Now. Whatsoever. You will ask him, he God. Let's see, what did he say we'll do? God will give it thee. I said, Holy Spirit, what did you say? He said, in your roughest time, when everything around you is so cloudy that you don't know where you are, don't look to man, don't look to woman, don't look to government, don't look to family. Take your eyes from those things that are so close. Take it to the him, to him that is bigger than all. <laughs> Last night. As I knelt down by my bed and prayed and prayed and prayed for this service and the sense of God, I said, God, I'm going to Chapel Hill. God, what do you want me to tell the people? He said, tell them whatsoever they will ask of me, I, God, will give it. God sent me to tell you what you need is not too big for God to supply. You didn't hear me. What you need is not too big for God to supply. What you need, say with me, what I need is not too big for God to give to me now. When Jesus had that, Jesus said to her, Jesus said unto her, Thy brother who died four days ago shall rise again. Your brother who died Four days ago, shall rise again. Is there anything in your life trying to slip out? Is your health threatening to leave you? Is your joy threatening to go? Is your job in jeopardy? Is there anything you have been looking for in life? Is there anything near you about leaving you? Is there anything you've ever lost that was dear to you? Jesus asked me to tell you. Whatever is gone out of your hand will come back again. Whatever is gone out of your hand that you need to stay with you will come back again. Did you hear what I'm saying? My brother, your job. A woman came to me six weeks ago. I just came from Korea and Japan and China and Philippines. This woman cried to my office. I said, what's your trouble? She said, look at it. My husband has gone to court to file divorce. 
I said, what did you do? She said, nothing. I said, what did you do? She said, nothing. I said, do you want your husband back? She said, he's the father of my four children. He's the husband of my youth. We've been married for 23 years. I don't want him to go. Call him back. I said, what's his name? He said, John. I said, John, come back and pick your paper and take it away. She said, what do I do? I said, nothing. Wait for John. He's coming. <laughs> she said, what did you say? I said, John is coming back. She said, he's left town. I said, the transport that took him will bring him back. <laughs> 24 hours later, John didn't come with car. John flew. John said, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. She said, you are the problem. The woman said, you are the problem. She said, you are the problem. You know, when husband and wife is fighting, one of the two is always the problem. The man said, you are my problem. The woman said, you are. After five minutes of argument, she said, let's go and see our archbishop. John brought his wife in tears. He said, Papa, I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I don't know what's wrong. Everything about me saying, go back, go back, go back. So I flew here. I want you to beg my wife to marry me again. I come to collect the papers that are fired. The wife began to cry. He began to cry. I knew it was not God that took the man from her. Did you hear what I'm saying? There are many things that are slipping out of your hand. You think it's God taking it. It's the devil. But Jesus says, it's coming back. 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 Power is coming back. Life is coming back. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. I said, John, you are in my office. What happened that you filed the boss? He said, I don't know at all. I just woke up. I thought I didn't need my home anymore. I thought I don't need anymore. I have no strength to continue. What went wrong? He said, I lost strength to continue. I lost strength to continue. Maybe there's someone here this morning who has almost lost strength to continue. There's a vision God put in your head. God said, go ahead. And the devil says, stop. The Lord sent me to tell you that vision is coming back again. I said, John, what did your wife do? He said, she did nothing. I said, did you think of your children? Now you are the only father they have. He said, I lost my memory. I couldn't think of my wife. I couldn't think of the children. Help me. Help me. You know, the greatest thing I have found in life, in 32 years of close work with God, no one that says, God, help me, has God ever denied help. Say with me, God, help me. God, help me. When it's rough, God, help me. When it's tough, God, help me. When I don't know what to do, God, help me. When I'm in trouble, God, help me. When I'm weak, God, help me. When I'm down, God, help me. When I'm in confusion, God, help me. Hallelujah. And the wife looked to him and said, John, it was yesterday morning I ran to Papa to tell him what you have done. And I told him, I want you back. John said, what time? 
The woman said, 11 o'clock. John said, at 11.15, I was in a meeting when I took excuse to go to the bathroom. The loud speaker in my ears, John, John, go home, John, go home. I said, you know who was calling you? He said, no, I said, me. <laughs> I, I was calling you. He said, the voice sounded like your voice. And I said, yes, I did. Spiritual life is not mystic. I want to explain that. When you decide to walk with God, you step to mystery. God can intervene anytime. God can come down even when you are not ready. He said, I took excuse. From the meeting, I told them, I'm going back home. The people said, we have not finished. He said, the call I received from the bathroom is more than this meeting. Who was calling him? God. Say God. God. Say God. God. I don't know what state of mind you have this morning. I don't know what state of mind you have this morning. I don't know what is trying to slip out of your hand. But the message I'm given by God is very simple. Martha said, but now I know. And from the minute you know that God is interested in your marriage, the minute you know God is interested in your business, the minute you know God is interested in your health, the minute you know that God is interested in what you are doing for him, the job will take new turn. The business will have new course. Your life will have new direction. I don't know how many John we have here this morning who want to go to court to file divorce. God sent me to tell you, don't do it. You say, what do you mean? I've gone far. Come back. Come back, John. Come back, John. Come back, John. God is saying, come back. You say, why? And I say, why not? You say, my wife is a devil. That's why the Bible says we shall cast out devil. <laughs> How can you reach your wall if you can't reach your home? Maybe that's a mistake in language. But I'm not sure you can win the whole world if you can't win your house. Why would God send me to say what I'm saying now? It's because God knows you need help. What is dying out of your hand? Jesus asked me to tell you, it shall live again. saying to you today I want to dwell on the world I know say I know I, know. I didn't hear you try it one more time I know. that yes. whatsoever, whatsoever thou, thou will, will ask, ask God. God stop a minute One of the biggest English I have tried in over 40 years to understand is whatsoever. Whatsoever. Look around you inside your spirit. Whatsoever. Check your head. Whatsoever. Look at your job. Whatsoever. Look at your home. Whatsoever. Look at your health. Whatsoever. Check around your marriage. Whatsoever. Look at the ministry God put you. Whatsoever. Look at your bank account. Just let your, let your flesh leave this hall. Put your spirit to use. Before you search, know first.
Because God said, you may see the crisis, but wherever there is crisis, there is Christ. And you say, amen. amen. I'm looking for Jesus in the midst of all my crisis. When I have crisis, I look for Christ in the center of it. And when Jesus comes, the whole storm go down. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, let's see what this Bible is telling me. Oh my God. The, the Lord severed the anointed. Yes. Isn't that good for you and I? Yes. Oh, thank God for that. Well, he will hear him from his holy heaven. God is ready to hear me and hear you. Amen. Huh? With the saving strength of his right hand. God has the saving strength Amen. of his right hand. Can't, can't you say this with me? He's going to rescue me. <laughs> with his saving hand. I think that means that as long as I'm in his hands, he's not going to drop me. Did you hear what I'm saying? He's not. Better than two of us. You put your life in his hands. How will he drop you? Say no. no. Say no. no. He wouldn't drop me. He's not going to drop me. To the shame. God will not drop me. For me to be ashamed. Did you get it now? Let's hear the next one. Some trust in chariots. Some do. And some in horses. Some do. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Say that hallelujah for me. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Well, listen to that. Those of us who trust him, who remember him. Verse 8. They are brought down and fallen. Others are brought down. But we are risen and we stand upright. Say with me, I'm risen. I'm standing, I'm standing upright. upright. I'm risen, no, no matter how tough or rough. I'm risen. I'm standing upright. Upright. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before you sit down. Listen to me. The day God removed his hand from you, you are finished. You are different from the worldly people. Your hope and trust is only in God. Your confidence is in God. Your trust is in God. Your strength is in God. My choir sang a song recently. My strength is in you, Lord. My power is in you, Lord. My life is in you, Lord. That day, something began to shake inside me. My strength is in you, Lord. My power is in you, Lord. My life is in you, Lord. I said, God, I didn't know the choir could preach to me. But I'm taking this as true. My strength is in you, Lord. My power is in you, Lord. My life is in you, Lord. My all is in you, Lord. It's all. It's all in your hand. My strength is in you, Lord. My power is in you, Lord. My life is in you, Lord. I... I Think of that day, think of that day, when the only brother Mary and Martha had was sick, and they sent one of their friends from the town, and said, go tell Jesus, the man whom you love is sick, come, heal him. The man whom you love is sick. Come, heal him. Jesus said, I will come. Bye bye. They turned, they said, Fine. He said, He's coming. He's still coming. First day, as a matter of fact, before they got home to relay the message back, Lazarus died. And then Jesus turned to the disciples and said, I'm glad. 
he died. You are glad your friend died? Oh yes, I'm glad. But I'm very happy I wasn't there. And he continued with what he was doing. Day one, day two, when they waited after 12 hours, it didn't come, they buried Lazarus. And Jesus went on with his ministry. Think of the agony of disappointment. Think of how terrible. The only friend they have, they've lost their father, they've lost their mother. Only three of them were converts of Christ in Capernaum, in Bethany. Only three of them were converts. The whole nation, Jesus preached and preached and preached. Nobody listened. Three people listened. They heard him. Every time Jesus and the 12 men passed through that town, they gave him food. He drank water. Only once they have need. And they say, go call him. Go call him. My Bible said, when they got there, they said to Jesus, your friend living in Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha, is sick. The man whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness, this sickness, this particular one, is not unto death, but for the glory of God. The one you have now, the trouble, the pain you are going through, God wants to get glory. This is not for the devil's glory. God is coming to your house. God is coming to your house. God is coming to your house. Jesus said, this one, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. <laughs> now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He loved them. Lazarus died. He died. You say, I'm a Christian. Things are wrong with me. You are not dead yet. I say, you are not dead yet. Lazarus died. He died. He was sick when they sent for Christ. But Jesus said, I'm glad this sickness, this one, what I'm passing through now, God wants to get glory. How can God get glory when I'm crying? How can God get glory when my bank account is empty? How can God get glory when I'm in trouble? I want us to read this scripture as it is, just raw and rough. And Jesus said, now when Jesus, now Jesus loved matter, he loved them, he did. You say, people whom God loved, do they have trouble? Yes. But do trouble have them? No. We haven't reached a stage where trouble can have us. We can still have trouble. Yes. I have this dress. This dress doesn't have me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I can have pain, but pain doesn't have me. It's like Paul. Paul was in prison, but prison was not in him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let what you have have you. Don't let money have you. Don't let time have you. Don't let name have you. Have it, but let God get glory out of it. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Three weeks ago on Sunday morning, I was in the church. God said to me, who are financially blessed. I said, tell them, if I give you status, don't turn to statue.
If I give you status, don't turn to statue. Mm. Make it loud for him. He, he speaks American English. Let him, he's our bishop. Let, make it loud. Try to tell if, them what if I If the say. Lord gives us status, he does not want us to turn to a statue or a monument. He wants us to stay alive. Inside us. Inside of us, yes. If God raised you from this church and make you governor, don't live in state house and forget God's house. And one of my engineers began to cry. And one of the doctors began to cry. I said, God, what have I said? What did I say? I didn't want anybody to cry. And they were weeping and weeping. Why were they crying? For sometimes now, the job God blessed them with so occupied them that they didn't remember the church. They became big in the world and small in God. So even though the status came from God, they become statue in God's house. You know statue don't move. Statue don't pay tithe. Statue don't give offering. And statue does, if statue does this on Monday, he does it throughout the whole week. He had heard, therefore, that he was sick. He abode two days still in the same place where he was. How will you feel if the man you have been giving food for three years, you send, say, go call him, emergency. And two days later, he's still not there. Will you still shake his hand? Will you feel disappointed? I'm glad to tell you, God never comes late. I said, God never comes late. He never comes late. He stayed two days still. Then after that, said he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again. How do we, who are trying to bless our world, get stoned? Why is it that every time we are trying to make more efforts to extend the kingdom, we get stones? Why doesn't the whole world say, well done, Bishop, thank God for you, I'm so happy. Why do some still pick stones? What have we done? Thank you is not good with stone. I think thank you like this is better than thank you, boom. <laughs> Don't you think you need some thank you with hand? Yes. Do you think it's every time you need some scourge? Do you think you need some stoning? No. Jesus was told. They still want to stone you for healing the sick, opening blind eyes, unstopping deaf ears, and raising the dead. Let's see how Jesus responded. Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbled because there's no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. How can Jesus say, Man dead is sleeping? In Christ, there's no death. When that day come to you and me, when we are no more able to breathe, to do anything, and the onlookers say we are dead, Jesus said we are resting. Why? He will soon come 
to our homes. He will soon come to that job. He will soon come. Whatever died in your house, I see Christ coming to wake it up. He may not come at your timing, but he will come and not too late. I say, Jesus is coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. If your job is lying asleep, God is coming. If your marriage is in trouble, God is coming. If your home is in trouble, God is coming. I see Christ with the heavenly host getting up. God is getting up. Coming. He knows your home address. He knows where you live. And he said, this one, this particular one is not for shame. It's for the glory of God. It's for the glory. It's for the glory. It's for the glory. Just hold on. Hold on. It's just Friday. Sunday's coming. It's just Friday. Sunday's coming. It's just Friday. Despair comes on Friday. The stones come on Friday. But Sunday, 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 Sunday. Sunday, Sunday is coming. The stone will roll away. The stone will push aside. And you who was dead, you can stand again to say to death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is your power? It is swallowed up in victory. Say hallelujah. Today may be your Friday. Today may be your Friday. Today may be your Friday. Sunday is coming. Say with me, my Sunday is coming. Today may be my Friday. With bruises, wounds, pain, blood, stain, crown of thorns. But my Sunday is coming. My Sunday is coming. My Sunday. He's coming! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. You know.